And what's the, what's the lowest somebody can expect to make as an assistant waiter? Well, the lowest, okay, mm, the lowest is $800. What's up? Welcome to uh, welcome back to another episode of Ship Life TV, the show that is dedicated to raising awareness of the opportunity of working on cruise ships and helping new and existing crew have an enjoyable experience. Today we are joined by Svetlana, Lana for short. Yeah, right? Lana. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> and um, she is joining us because she used to work on cruise ships. She did. Uh, you were a restaurant steward. Like, what was your? I was assistant waiter. Yeah, assistant waiter. waiter. Yeah. Gotcha. And uh, yeah, she's going to be talking to us about her experience uh, working on celebrity cruises as an assistant waiter and her ship life experience in general. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, what, how, what, how long ago was that that you worked on cruise ships? It was uh, two years ago. Two years ago. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so for me, I think I, I used to work on cruise ships about three years ago. Two years ago. But... Um, I, we were talking earlier, and you had mentioned that you don't have a lot of friends out here that you that you talk about your exactly. ship life with. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to talk to you about okay. that. Uh, me too. Because <laughs> <laughs> now it like all these memories will start coming That's back. True. That's true. Um, how did you get? Well, first of all, where are you from? From Russia. From Russia. Yeah. What part of Russia? Um, from Saint Petersburg. St. Petersburg. Yes. Okay, cool. I, Have you been there? I've never been there. I've heard some... Some, some ships go there, right? Yes, exactly. And yeah, I, I met some... When I was back home, I met some friends who were on the ships, like in celebrity ships. So oh, we went, that's I was cool. like a local tour guide. That was nice. That Did you... Were you able to get people on back home? No. For some reason in Russia, you can... It's like for some security reasons, you can get on the ship. Like, like visitors, yeah, just in Russia. My friends tried to do that, but yeah, some security. I, I guess celebrity is kind of American ship, you know, in Russia, we're right. not really a best friend right now. So <laughs> maybe because of it. Yeah, that's, but that, yeah, that they, I know they do that on different ports, but yeah, maybe Russia is like kind of odd with that, right? Yeah. Um, so what was the, when you, when you started working on cruise ships, um, what was the process for you? Like, what were you doing before then? Well, like, did you want to go into cru cruise ships working in the restaurant? Did you kind of just um, decide, I'm just going to get on doing whatever? Or Yeah, I was um, in college. So, of course, I was like a part-time working in a restaurant. And after the college, I just wanted to see the world and just try to work in some international company. Yeah. And that's why I applied for this. And it was pretty easy because I started applying it while I was still in college. So like as soon as I graduated, I pretty much left for a contract. I got it. And it was it was like a lot of paperwork, a lot like different like medical, like uh, about my work, about my family experience, uh, resume, different interviews. So I had the first interview with Ismira, right? And I think so, something like that. So this is a company. Oh, uh, Azamara. Uh, no, uh, Azamara, like, um, the company which had like, hire people to to the ships. Oh, I see. So you went through an agency. Yes. What, yes. Um, yeah. That was an agency. They helped me because I didn't know anything. Well, I how did you hear about cruise ships? Um, I used to take part, like an exchange student in work and travel program. Mm -hmm. You know that? And so the same company, they were doing different exchange programs. And yeah, they, they just recommend me that. Because my initial goal was I wanted to go to study in Canada mm -hmm. and like I, and I needed the money and I didn't want to spend like in Russia more years making money and you know I would just decided like go to travel and make money so that was my initial goal just to right. make money I want to and, travel and I want to make money exactly, exactly. <laughs> it. but it didn't eventually it didn't work out like I would spend so much money in every single port but yeah but you know what the initial like, problem or problem, goal was mm -hmm. to save money Sure. And yeah, so you had to, I had to kind of prepare for the, all of the interview to about like to know more about the food, about the ingredients, allergies, like more. They, they tested you on all that stuff in exactly. the interview? Exactly. They would give me a materials because 
Like in Russia, our restaurants is so easy. You know, we don't require not that hard as like for celebrity for Americans. You know, mm -hmm. so I was just I was good at my job, but like I had to learn a lot to get to the, get this job. How but, much experience in um in in the food industry did you have before going on the ships? Um, so I don't know. Like do, I might be yes, saying like true here, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it was a year. But I have to put like three years because that was uh, a requirement, you know. Gotcha. So you. But it was like a year when I was in school. It was just like after school I would work or something like that. So this and so you hopped on ships right after after school then. Yes. Got it. And you had so you're saying you had one year, mm -hmm. but the requirement was yes. three. Yes. Everybody does that. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. but yeah. I believe that some people like you know they didn't even. Of course, and but that's the thing. It's like. Uh, I, I feel like a lot of companies they'll they'll put some type of requirement because mm -hmm. they're looking for a type of person, but they don't even check. I know, I know, because um, it's just impossible. I think to find someone who's actual experience is the first of all, and second of all, of course, they don't want some just from the street person who doesn't know absolutely anything. Here, right. you know, at least I'm trying to pretend that I know everything, so I'm trying to <laughs> learn, I'm trying to right. know, get ready for it. It's so. mainly about the attitude, you know, like you could take someone in and off the street and if they're willing to learn, mm. but you know, that's that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> you know, like, ah, I want a job, but you need experience. Well, I need experience, yeah, but to get experience, you need a job. So that's a whole yeah. other thing. But when you were um, working on crew, well, when you applied, right? Mm -hmm. um, what, what was the what was that process like for you? Can you walk me through that? So, you know, the the that the agency that that you how did you find the agency? They they told you about it, right? Yeah, I because I already had the experience with this agency, uh -huh. and well, we started. First of all, they gave me uh, a, lots of papers to get ready, like about the like allergies, mm -hmm. different kind of diets, different kind of food. You know, oh, this I is them testing know. you. For yeah, the so because yeah, and I had to learn a lot of different uh, ingredients for the dishes, food, and all this kind of stuff, which kind of required. Because so, it's a U.S. company. Exactly, yeah, that makes and sense. so I've been trying to. Learn it, and and I had my um, graduation projects together, so I I couldn't do all too ma too much time for it. Um, it was a first of all. That's why it's kind of a long process because I was also doing my final project in school and this and that, and then they asked me to write the resume. And. Um, and this is all the agency. You haven't even started working with celebrity yet. No, no, no. Yeah. So they're just preparing you for for all. I felt yeah. I felt my first interview because I I, I didn't really had enough knowledge. Mm -hmm. And they say like you like we don't want to go like take you to a main agency because you know you're gonna fail and you, it will be sad. First of all, I also say because I knew some friends working in, for celebrities, so I say I want just celebrity because yeah. that was many different uh, companies, but. I wanted to just celebrity. Why? Why celebrity? Uh, because I heard, as I heard, it's a, like best salaries. Mm -hmm. And for that position. Yes, exactly. Right. For that, for like for restaurant uh, department. Mm -hmm. And plus, the ships are big, like um, very Americanized. The well, destinations they always great. I mean, it doesn't matter which company, I guess. Sure. And. Yeah, so environment, I heard the best in celebrities. So this is what I heard from my friends. And friends that have worked on the on mm -hmm. the ship before. Okay. Yeah. So you already had an idea of yes, what working exactly, on cruise exactly, ships was like. Exactly. And yeah, I think like after the resume and after I passed the test with them, they um, scheduled me for the interview yeah i just like forgot because it was almost five years ago you know right, right. so i scheduled interview with the ismira company it located in somewhere in europe you know some mm -hmm. sometimes they come in and making um, actual interviews mm -hmm. but i i had a skype interview oh i see so That's yeah convenient. it was it, yeah it was it was very convenient 
I put a lot of stickers across my laptop, you know, <laughs> just to to remember. Yeah, exactly. Post it notes. To, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. It was like super cool. I I was at home, you know. He was like a sweatpants. He was like <laughs> a nice shirt. Nice button up shirt. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and the lady was very nice, and she didn't ask me anything crazy, anything hard, anything what I was actually so afraid of getting ready for. She just asked me where I worked and. Oh, she asked me, I remember the question, she asked me how many plates I can uh, carry in my hand. But our restaurant was so easy, you know, we mm -hmm. didn't do all this like stuff. So right. I was like, five, you know, yeah. because I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> she was like, five? I'm like, yeah, five, what's, what's the problem? <laughs> that was so funny. And she was like, was, was she, she was impressed with five? Yeah, I mean, she, because it's not, it's not possible to hold in one hand five plates, you know? Yeah, especially like dinner, restaurant yeah, exactly. size plates. Exactly, and she was like, you know, when I, when I was just like, I'm not gonna argue Amazing. with you, just, yeah. just like, okay. And um, this question, it was like, she asked me like, what's the best uh, dish in your restaurant? And that's it, the interview was like literally two minutes. Are you interested in learning the seven alarming things that cruise ship contracts are hiding in the fine print? Go to shiplifetv.com slash contract secrets and find out for free. Because one of the biggest problems that I see with new hires is that they don't know what they're signing up for. And they show up on day one and they're expected to know everything that's in a six page legal contract. So go to shiplifetv.com slash contract secrets to watch almost an hours worth of free content where I break down a six page contract and you can learn everything that you need to about vacation, schedule, pay, overtime, benefits, and so much more. That's shiplifetv.com slash contract secrets to become a member of the Shiplife TV community and get free access to the crew library. Now back to the video. After maybe two hours, they mailed me like, yeah, you got approved and just wait for the, how's it called? You know, this, how, um, this paper which assign you for some contract. I even forgot. It was an offer letter? Kind Something of. Something like it's that? Like, yeah. I forgot. That was like a special name for it, but I just forgot. And they say, wait, some people wait six months. Some I knew some people who waited nine months. Mm -hmm. So you just never know. Like, it takes a long time for some people. Exactly. Yeah. It takes a long time because they're trying to schedule in advance, you know. But sometimes right. things happen and someone resigned, someone, someone got sick, and so they need emergency. And that was my case pretty much because- So you got to sign on quick then? Yeah, very quick. Like in a, in one week I got, I actually got a choice. It was two choices like uh, to go to reflection, mm -hmm. celebrity reflection, which were, which was in Europe that time. Like mm -hmm. I was supposed to join in Rome or another choice was um, solstice, which like, I supposed to join in um, Australia, you know, and sound like real dream Australia, just for a person who just graduated from college, didn't really travel much like Australia. Mm -hmm. But um, I had to buy a tickets through my agency. Mm. And um, it was kind of a contract thing. And they say it's like $1,000, you know, but it's just like way too much. Yeah. For the beginning where you didn't really save any money. Yeah. And I was just like, I know it's a dream, but I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Even to join the Rome, they asked me for four hundred dollars. It's like way too much. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not. I'm just not gonna pay. It's a, yeah. And I didn't pay, and they asked me just to pay some kind of cancellation fee, which was fifty, uh, fifty dollars. It was just okay, and I bought my own ticket. It was pretty easy way cheaper, I think even less than a hundred dollars. So you're saying that they wanted you to buy a ticket through them. Through them, yeah. Right, and but obviously it's gonna be expensive going through them. But yeah, cause, but the point is if I would, the contract would get canceled or rescheduled, mm -hmm. so easy for them to change it, to buy another ticket. You right. know, this is the point of buying such expensive, but not on my, like in my situation, cause I didn't have that money yet. Right, so, so like, you had I'm to pay for that out try. of your own pocket. It, 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 it wasn't, taken out of your check. Yeah. Yes, oh, I have I to, you know, yeah, I have to, because especially like I'm just starting, there is no guarantee I will show up or something. <laughs> right, right, that makes sense. And um, so it's just like, I will buy it, I will take this risk. And I bought, I came a little bit like one day early. I, so I had to get then uh, American visa, mm -hmm. C1D, and then uh, Italian visa just to join the ship. So I got right. two visas. And 11, September, I remember September 11, like a big day. Yeah, this is yeah. the day when I joined the ship. I got a little bit earlier. They booked a hotel for me mm -hmm. because I paid for this. That mm -hmm. was 
okay price mm -hmm. and because also you so pay, they, yeah they... it was like a 50 dollars uh -huh. and it included the hotel and the transportation oh 50 you know, bucks for a hotel like, and transportation you... that's not bad mm? 50, so you paid $50 yeah. for the hotel and the transportation yes, to exactly. the ship? Okay. Yeah, so the, the transportation also was to the hotel from the airport and mm -hmm. stuff. And I had a day, I went to Rome, I saw the Rome because the, sh the cruise terminal in the ship is, is really, really far away from the Rome. Right. And you really... It's in Civitavecchia. Exactly. I and believe that's like an hour and a half right like and yeah. Chivadavecchia was always an embarkation day yeah. there is no way you can go out no way so mm -hmm. I was really lucky in my first day yeah I was just like discovering the scene the Rome and that's it that was my only one time in Rome yeah. basically and yeah same that happened to me on my second contract on reflection mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and yeah, they yeah they on, on for my position luckily we didn't have to pay uh, for our, our flights, but you know, they flew us in a day early. Mm. So yeah, I got to, when I flew in, um, I got to see Rome, the Colosseum and spend all that time and then, you know, head out at like six o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, that, that, that was cool. Yeah. So when you, okay, so um, you signed on quick. It took like a week after your interview, you were you're yes, saying? Yes, that was a week. Got it. Was. But. Um, what, so like your medicals, your visa, after yeah, you were after, accepted. Exactly. After I got accepted to celebrity, uh -huh. I, before I was just getting ready just to document, just to be as a real waiter, you know, just like pretend that I'm actual super cool real waiter. That's it. No more <laughs> uh -huh. any other documents because what, what else? Like you can maybe, you know, you, you don't really know what for sure. Maybe you not even get accepted. Right. So you just, that's it before the interview. Then when you pass it, um, each company has its own requirements. Mm -hmm. So that was like a medical. Mm -hmm. In Russia, it was very easy. I heard it in other countries, you have to actually go through all of the doctors, like seriously. Mm -hmm. They will look at you, ask some questions. Mm -hmm. For me, I just went to one doctor and he just looked at me, you know, I didn't have to take anything <laughs> off. And he was like, like, are you okay? You know, you, so, is it something bothers you? I'm like, no, I'm fine. He's like, do you have a tattoo? So I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, no, well, you, you're pretty good. You know, you, you get to go. Oh yeah, he took the, all of the tests, like a blood test. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, to be safe, like about the tests. Did you do x-ray or anything like that? No. Not even? No, nothing. No, not no, dentist, like no. test, vision test, nothing? No. Wow. No, yeah, then Russia it's like, <laughs> You know. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Just, yeah. How many fingers? <laughs> yeah, but like the blood, you know, test that was very serious, and he they took it seriously. But the rest about the body, is it just like, well, you look healthy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I guess you're good to go. So it was so easy. I didn't like, because I had to do it. It's for one year the yeah. certificate, right? So I had to do it one more time. It was the same thing. Two years. Two years. Yeah, your medical on celebrity oh, yeah, is yeah. valid for two years. Two years, but. Mine was about to expire, so for some reason I extended this, but not my visa. Oh, like, I see. Yeah, but I did extend it. It's it was about a um, hundred dollars for mm -hmm. the certificate. This, mm -hmm. and yeah, that was that was easy. But I heard in some like in in Asian countries they would look at you everywhere. Like <laughs> I would never want to go. And uh -huh. I had I had my friend, she was trying to get a job there. And they stop her for some, you know, some like simple things, mm -hmm. which like she would pass in Russia, honestly. I don't know. But yeah, so I done my medical and then there was an um, interview for the cruise ship, mm -hmm. like C1D. It was pretty easy because I had a few visas, like American visas before. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And he just like, because before I got like a tourist visa saying that I'm going to go travel with my boyfriend and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, hey, why didn't you go to travel with your boyfriend? I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm going to do it by myself, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to go and work. Mm -hmm. And that's it. He was, yeah, it was so easy to get that visa. So you didn't have a problem getting the visas. How long mm -hmm. does it take to get a visa? Well, you're making an appointment. Right now, the situation is very different, completely different sure. because... 
um, they closed many embassies around the sta- uh, Russia. Mm-hmm. And right now we have just one in um, in Moscow. Did you already speak English before you hopped on the ship? Uh, yes, I did. I mean, this is the way how you can get a job, you know, yeah, if you right. speak. But I mean, um, but, like, were, were you... Were you practicing English before you went um, on the ship or I wouldn't say my English was really good I could talk about like oh like your dog or something you know <laughs> but I couldn't I don't know I would still make a uh, lot of mistakes and sure. stuff because I was as a like a change student I told you twice in states mm-hmm. and this is was my only experience before I, didn't, I I couldn't I didn't know English at all got it so I could speak but like Still enough to pass. I was, I was, I was prepared. I was prepared about talk about the food, mm-hmm. so you can get ready. If you really want it, you can like, get ready. You just learn all the <clears throat> sentences, all the answers on the questions, and that's it. They, you know, it's pre- It's always the same. I would say the questions. Got it. So let's jump to when you, when when you actually hopped on the ship, right? Mm-hmm. What what I mean. How excited were you? Were you nervous? Were you anxious? You know. Yeah. So on the in Chivitavikia they have kind of angar. I don't know where people getting ready mm-hmm. and the. Yeah, you have to go on the, the line. Just getting ready. No. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So your I bags. met some also uh, new new people. Mm-hmm. So we kind of got together, and we just of course we were so excited like it's gonna be a new life you know we would go all around and so you already made friends in line yes exactly yeah. exactly mm-hmm. this is how it works i guess because they <coughs> a sticker you they put something like you're new yeah. so you you can see it from the far and you're just like oh you're new too like, yeah it's a color right yes the, exactly the, yeah uh-huh. because they put the different sticker to everyone mm-hmm. so just to see have an idea you know and yeah we got like it was a long process Oh, because I had to check our documents, the medical thing before we got to the ship. Mm-hmm. When we got to the ship, like you're already actually super exhausted because um, you woke up super early, like six o'clock in the morning, yeah. and then you got to this um, ship and you wait for to get actually to the ship, mm-hmm. and then you come in there and you still don't really have a um, the cabin or something. Mm-hmm. You have to wait. Mm, there was like conference room or something right you have and to go through orientation yeah there fill was out your um, contract. there's a captain he would you know uh-huh. greet us and say <laughs> hey like welcome thank you this thank you that they would just exp- say something about the ship mm-hmm. always like about the same stuff and then some people will go who already used to work they mm-hmm. would just go to see their friends or they got a cabin the cabin right. so they know where to go they know but for me it was just like a forest so we would just get together they would explain us they mm-hmm. would give us a key for the for the cabins mm-hmm. and yeah and like okay you're good to go and then <laughs> i remember to find the cabin <laughs> first week i would say it was just impossible without any help yeah it's just impossible it they looks all look the same so right big like, Everything exactly looks yeah. the same. All this, you know, <laughs> ooh, it doesn't all the make hallways, any. All the doors. Exactly, it doesn't out. make anything. Yeah. Um, actually, you know, after I was, like, when I was coming for another contracts, every time, uh, I would still get lost for for first week. Mm-hmm. You still have to get used to, even though you know right. the ship very well. You still, I mean, unless it's in, you know, in a beautiful position, like, mm-hmm. or like, you know, because ship is long. And all these doors are the same. Yeah. And sometimes I wouldn't eat because I just couldn't find the crew mess. Mm-hmm. And you don't really have a time to go and look for. It. You can ask, right. you know, but people mostly everyone's in, in a rush. Yeah. Exactly. Like, excuse me. Excuse just, me. It's just like <laughs> so, like because I'm girl, and it was a little bit easy sure. to me than the, for the guys right. to find the way, especially like you know. Everybody like new girls there. Yeah. It's like they call it a fresh meat or whatever. Yeah. But it was still whenever I asked for help, they would help me to find a cabin or anything. But I just don't want to bother people every single time. Of you course. Know? So I wouldn't eat for sometimes like in the morning in the breakfast when everybody in rush like mm-hmm. dinner. Everybody just finished work and they all go together. So yeah. it was easy. 
but not the uh, lunch or <clears throat> breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was this one on my first week, my first night, right? Um, when I joined the contract, I was in, uh, I was with my band, right? And um, they went to Mingles, right? Mm -hmm. Which is like, which is like the crew bar kind of thing. <laughs> um, but from there, um, I had to go back to my cabin because I needed to grab something. And then when I left my cabin to go back to Mingles, I couldn't remember how to get there. <laughs> and I remember trying to go there, not remembering. And the reason I couldn't figure it out was because the doors were closed. Oh, yes, yes. Right, because there were there's two entrances, and there's the double door entrance, and then there's the other entrance to it, but all the doors were closed. And so I didn't recognize it because I, when I went in, the doors were open. And so I didn't want to start barging into random doors, so I figured, oh, well, I guess I'm just going to go back to my cabin because I can't find it. The next day, my roommate was like, what happened to you? And I didn't, I didn't want to say, like, I couldn't find it. So, <laughs> so I just said, oh, I was tired, so I just went to sleep. <laughs> yeah. But I get you, you know, that it all looks the same. It you took know, me about two weeks. Uh, my first contract, I, I got like a normal shared cabin, but the girl I was living, she had a boyfriend coming mm -hmm. and she wanted to live with this guy. Mm -hmm. And she's supposed to, because she was, she had like a hostess position or something, she's supposed to have, um, a single cabin. Mm. So she was like, I'll give you my single cabin and we, you know, and we will like move together with my boyfriend. I was like, no oh, she'll, problem. She'll, she'll take the double cabin because yes, it's, exactly. it's technically bigger. So yeah. it was awesome. Like I got my uh, first like single cabin. First contract you got a yes. single cabin? Yes. Wow. I was just like, I couldn't, but there is another thing because you kind of feel lonely, but you're tired. You don't want to go like, to drink every night, but you want to talk to someone. You of know? course, of course. And so the uh, the cabin was um, in the front of the ship, you mm -hmm. know, where the yakers, uh, the anchors. Uh, yeah, yeah. You and can hear. You them. could hear it every yeah. time. And also we had this um, watertight doors. Yes. And it would close every time ship <laughs> next to the land. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I had to go through. Um, this theater. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, I had yes. to go through the theater. And for the first time, you're just like so lost. And is I this was on just, reflection? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would just like come out, you know, there is like sometimes it's performance, like morning mm -hmm. is fine. There is nothing going on. There's yeah. like uh, training cause, and it's fine. I actually like to see the always singing, dancing, some mm -hmm. fans going on. Yeah. But when it's actual performance, you mm -hmm. know, I would just open the door and just like walk <laughs> through the guest, <laughs> yeah. like in my uh, waiter uniform, uh -huh. you know, just uh -huh. looked completely lost. And after a week or something, a guy is from who's doing the lights, mm -hmm. they would just, fine man like you know you, you can't just go there you know yeah. you, you messing up with our lights and stuff yeah. like just by opening the door because you open and everything is wider right you know and it's kind of dark so everybody sees it you are just coming <laughs> and so they show me the way how i have to go which is like even far right right like i i think yeah when the watertight doors are closed and by the way, watertight doors, uh, on every every ship they have these. And the reason they have these watertight doors is just in case the the water gets into the ship, it doesn't go into every compartment, so they seal it off. Which means if the watertight door is closed, we as crew have to go around them. And so I remember, um, I think it was also on reflection, when the watertight doors are closed, sometimes you're like, okay, well, I gotta go up and I gotta go all the way around, go to like the middle of the ship, just to go back around and then back exactly, down one exactly. deck. Exactly. But also, I was living a very super downstairs, mm -hmm. I would say. So I have to go up and then go down to, you know, to get to the same right. I... How's it called? I-95. I-95. Yeah, yeah you yeah. got to go up, like, to, like, deck three or something like that yeah, just to go across. Was, and when you knew, they told you, like, you cannot open the water tight door. There is no... Big so no-no. So then yeah. I noticed, like, people do that all the time. I mean, it's not a <laughs> good thing to do. It's not allowed right. still, but they would still do that. Mm -hmm. And, like... Or staff captain say like like you have to call me you know and like ask mm -hmm. for permission. Once I did that, I did it once because I was so in rush. I, I was so late for work and I didn't have a time to climb up and then go down. And just like everybody mm -hmm. knew the staff captain number, I would just like call him. And he you know? must have been a cool staff captain then. Yeah, and yeah. I just like can I please open it? And he was like, yeah, sure. sure, sure. Yeah, like, they can like, see you on the, the camera hell, too. You know? like, hey. yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So your first week, I mean, your first couple of weeks. So you're you're. You're new to the ship and it's a little stressful because you're trying to find your way around. What about uh, 
your work as you as an assistant waiter, right? Mm -hmm. That that was your your initial position, right? Mm -hmm. you, so how was that like? So day one, what is that like when you when when you walk into the dining room? For the first couple days, I think they just say just watch. Okay. Because even I, I, I was working the first my yeah. contract. I was working in the main dining room. It calls like this, and it's a huge too. Because it's for all of the guests and it's so big. And the galley where the food prepared, it's on the other side. And uh, all this like uh, um, station of the waiters, they all around this like a hole. Mm -hmm. And you have to just see what's going on, where is what, because there is in a the lot main of dining room. Is that where you worked? Yes, okay. that's where. Yeah, Everybody, yeah. Like every single assistant waiter who start working the first thing, they start working in the main dining room. Okay. And then I think I got attached to someone for... Yeah, I don't remember how exactly it was working, but you're not really able to do anything for the first week. I so you say. just shadow somebody for an entire yeah. week. Okay. I think that was like this, yeah, because you're really not... And the scene, you know, you... Because life starts right away. You you got in the ship and life starts like already. Uh, uh, passengers they already want to eat and yep. and you know and you don't really know anything. You don't know any of the dishes. You don't know where's what where to get because every single food you can get in a special window, let's say so. Mm -hmm. And you have to know which window to go. You can't just like walk around and waste your time. Mm -hmm. And also, um, so we had to carry the tray like this. Okay. I had to learn how to do this because so, you can't just do it right away. You know, all, your tray would always just like swing in and all the food would just, it right? Properly, would just yeah. go, like, try uh, almost like falling down uh -huh. or something. So that was my first week learning how to actually hold the tray. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was really. It They're was pretty fun. big. Yeah, right? like yeah, first week is just impossible. You think it's like it's impossible. And people uh, put so many plates, you know, <laughs> and you're like, wow. <laughs> It's just impossible. Yeah, that was my first week. But in the morning, we would work in um, Ocean View Cafe, mm -hmm. you know, like buffet thing. And that's, it's, that's the free buffet for, for the guests. Yeah, it's, on the top. It, was, it was pretty easy because you're just basically cleaning tables, cleaning plates. It's really, this is my least favorite part of all of the ships because it's, such a routine and you you kind of just cleaning and you know constantly cleaning yeah the same yeah. and you just really not enjoying it at all but actually somehow i got a duty let's say of entertaining guests mm -hmm. somehow like and i i was the one who would stay in the middle where all of this like stations with the food and i was like oh he's a mate He's an uh, old male, I have, can I help you? How was your day? You know, so I was doing this thing for uh, three months. So I wasn't be the one who is cleaning. So everyone has all position. Wait, so this, this is in Ocean View? Yes. So in Ocean View, you were the person who was like greeting guests walking in? Kind or? of, yeah. Okay. Now walking in. So we have... Um, so we have a people who stay in, 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 in the entrance, who uh -huh. just doing this like squeezing thing, washing the hands. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, the thing, hand sanitization. Right? Another mm -hmm. people on the side who would uh, clean the tables, mm -hmm. throw the dirty dishes. Mm -hmm. Another people who would take care of the food, like to bring the food, mm -hmm. to like refill stuff, mm -hmm. someone, yeah, like, and there are many stations, so they need many. Mm -hmm. And I was the person Someone actually is supposed to stay in a dishware and help to, uh, like, because they bring in big trays with a lot of dirty dishes and you so just have to... Someone organizes Yeah, you it. need to organize because it's yeah. a headache for the dishwasher to... Right. Because to, there is a lot of food they can't just put with the food, you know. You right. have to clean it. Oh, yeah, I've walked in the back it. before. Yeah, the, when, when you're crew, you got to walk back there and help them out by put it, your dish here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And um, so I was the one who was staying in the middle together with the one who is uh, refilling the uh, the food mm -hmm. and just yeah entertaining. I would say talking to people in the middle of the food area. Yeah, oh, exactly. So I was like, like hey, "How was your day? Uh -huh. Are you like looking for something?" Especially when crews just start, they all yeah. the guests are lost and something like that. And I remember, so I joined in September. Mm -hmm. 
And we were crossing the ocean in October or something, like maybe November. Oh, you're doing the crossing And I was the still Caribbean. new to the ship. I uh -huh. still didn't know a lot of things. And during the cro um, crossing, mm -hmm. a, a lot of uh, Zenith members, you know, who... Oh, the Zenith who, members, yeah. yeah. who's been on the ship like, like 90 20 cruises times, or something like that. 50 times, like yeah. so many times. And they would just come to me, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know, like, you know, m more than me. I don't yeah. know, you know, I, I can't help you. Yeah. And they would laugh at it, like, it just, you know, they would say, oh, it used to be like this, used uh -huh. to be like that, because they've been on the ship so many times, and mm -hmm. it's just my first month. Right. And I'm like, oh, I guess you know better. <laughs> so, yeah, I was working there, and it's it was okay. But then I, like, they switched the, the management, and mm -hmm. that's why, like, I got replaced, and I was... And the ship is always something's going on, you know. Mm -hmm. They always change and change. Like you can. So were you? You were you were working in the main dining room and in ocean. Yeah. So ocean because in the morning. How so? How the schedule worked that time? I don't know about now. So when I start working, there was two like three options. You work um, breakfast shift, lunch shift, or double shift. Mm -hmm. Right now, I guess they you can work only breakfast or lunch, and you have to work double shift every time. It's not yeah, it's kind of complicated. But anyway, we had like so breakfast, lunch, or double shift. Mm -hmm. If you work breakfast, you only work from um, let's say six o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. to uh, around eleven, mm -hmm. eleven thirty. Mm -hmm. So you work. In an ocean yoga for, for breakfast, it's, yeah. And then, um, and then that's it. You're pretty much off till the dinner, which starts like you had, you had to be there at five. Right. Um, so if it's a port, you get to go from pretty much 12 to five. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of hours for a crew member. It's that's a lot bad. of hours. Yeah. yeah. And then another, it's a lunch shift. It's, it's good for the ones who like to sleep because they start around 12. Yeah. So you can sleep all till 12, but you finish around five and you almost, you just have have a lunch and then you have to go for dinner. So you're so saying there, no there's life. like three shifts, right? So you got breakfast, which mm -hmm. is like six to 11.30. Mm -hmm. and then you got lunch, which is 12 to five. To five or something like and that. And then dinner is around. Yeah, dinner, everybody has to work for dinner, everybody. Okay. And also, like a double shift, which was the worst one, is, is they, they cover the most busiest hours. Like you work two hours in the breakfast and two hours for the lunch. For the lunch, oh. so you can't really like go out or something. Right. So that was the worst schedule ever. Mm -hmm. I like this uh, breakfast. It's hard to wake up, but you have lots of hours to go out. Right. It, that was just beautiful. So mm -hmm. beautiful. So you would do breakfast, and then you're done by eleven thirty. All right, and then That's I don't have it. to work yeah. again until till dinner. Yeah. That's great. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I like that one. It's still um, hard to wake up that early because dinner, it's just like talking about the shifts, you know, and I start to remember all this. It's so nice. I like it. Because <laughs> um, dinner is over around 11, right? Yeah. And by the time you get some food, you still, you can't, you don't want to just go and sleep, you know, otherwise, right. like, life is is over. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the work ship and is sleep, still work and yeah. sleep. Yeah. You have to get some another experience, otherwise you'll get crazy. You mm -hmm. will just seriously get crazy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how big, like, how social you are, it doesn't really matter. You still have to go and talk to other people. That's right. Just relax, maybe have some drink time to time. Mm -hmm. And the Mingles was a really, really cool place. I remember they used to make the wine mm -hmm. and cheese. The, That's right. My, yeah, it was yeah, my yeah, favorite yeah. wine. I like when they would bring some entertainment. And celebrities, they would really take care of the crew. They would make mm -hmm. so many different entertainment things. That's right, yeah. Like different, uh, also like bingo thing. Yeah, they did I bingo. Like That's too, right. Like did bingo. you ever win bingo? No, unfortunately. I it won was one too time. Many people. Really? Yeah. How much? Um, I, okay, so... The, the prize was like $300. Mm -hmm, that's awesome. But six people won. Six people won it? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, so you had to so split it? So we all it? had to split it. Oh, no. Yeah. So I was because like, I oh, remember the on. biggest prize is always like 5000 or something. Yeah. 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 And you always just like, yeah, please, you start please, the please, game please, please, and please. like, oh my gosh, how am I going to spend this money? You know, mm -hmm. oh, maybe, you know, I'll just quit this job or something. <laughs> I win. I'm leaving. Yeah, that's it. But uh, it's just awesome. How long um, into your first contract did it take for you to start feeling comfortable? Um, I would say after 
pre three and a half months, I would just get used to being tired constantly because mm-hmm. before you just just like how I'm gonna make it through it it's impossible mm-hmm. like I'm always tired and there is no point when I'm okay I gotta rest you know I'm ready to do I'm ready for a new day there is no such a point you're always tired you wake up in the morning you're already tired like in the end of the day you're just so tired mm-hmm. and you um, you have to do everything so fast so much new information and so many new people and they all want know their names yeah. but it's just like whenever you're coming back to the same ship it's fine you're good like you it's, oh, yeah. it's cool but when you just knew you you know i i didn't see the difference between like a captain and you know any other people like for me it was all, all the, same. the same like yeah. oh yeah i mean i knew captain because that's it but the sure. other like bridge people like you know i didn't know who i have to be careful with or something of course yeah, so yeah the ship like, politics mm-hmm. hotel hotel manager At, you know the, staff yeah. captain what's the difference who's this person and why do they get to tell people what to do yes things like and that you don't know what, with whom like to be nice or be careful not to That's say right. like oh i just opened the water die door you know you, <laughs> you, you just can yeah. you and yeah it takes time to get used to the job first of all like it takes time but for the job i i think i got used to for for one month right but in general the ship life just to be okay with going out after work going out from the ship not just to stay not to sleep even though you want to sleep so badly yeah i would prefer to go out but it also takes time like so yeah three and a half months so three and a half months and that's where you felt like you started to really feel comfortable and then normal yeah, I wouldn't contracts. say that you would ever feel comfortable, okay. <laughs> but you feel like it's you can make it, you know. Sure. Um, you like okay, that's when you felt a change. Is, yeah, when yeah. maybe yeah, I would say comfortable, but yeah, something like that. And also, I remember the period uh, five months. Whenever you reach your fifth month, you're getting crazy. You just sit, sit you're tired. <laughs> yeah, this is I notice every single contract like fifth months. You just like. I'm gonna quit. That's it. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna quit. Done. Get me out of here. And you stop going out, and you stop just doing. But as soon as this month passed, six and seven months, it was easy. It just six is like okay, you know. It was just dark time, mm-hmm. and seven you all so excited to go home. So yeah. it's just like flying by. Whenever you just start your contract, it's it's hard to switch to your. T- your hours just mm-hmm. to work, 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 work. You, I still actually have the same thing. Like, um, I don't want to just do nothing. You know, you always yeah. like, if you have a free minute, you have to do something because in the ship, if you have a uh, 15 minutes break, you can go to get a lunch. Yeah. Like you wouldn't just sit and do nothing. Right. If you have a one hour break, you can do a laundry, which is a big deal. It, yeah. And, um, do some let's say you got a hole you know like to sew it like mm-hmm. you always have to do something you can't mm-hmm. just do nothing um yeah so this is what i really like this is i learn from ship like mm-hmm. you if you got a free minute it's not just for wasted mm-hmm. you know you you can fit something you can do this and that so life is going on is happening mm-hmm. and <clears throat> um so the first month you just get in it back you're getting used to you're learning new people you 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 realizing how to communicate with them how to communicate with your new managers who who is good cop who is a bad cop mm-hmm. you know yeah <laughs> all this stuff and then from second till fifth months it's just like you work work um travel work travel or travel mm-hmm. and then Fifth month, I told you, it's a really hard one, and it's it. Yeah, all the emotional things. Right. In seven months, is just flying by. It also depends on um, where your ship is, because if it's in states, it's a lot of we had a lot of stress with um, how is it called? USPH. Yeah, USPH, because mm-hmm. you have to clean a lot. They would like you have to be ready to answer oh, yeah, all the yeah, questions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when you in Europe, they still ask you to clean a lot, but not with that pressure. Right. Um, also, it depends on if you like doing a cross atlantic. Like, it's a um, 
C day or poor day. You know, mm -hmm. If it's a C day, everybody work a lot, like everybody, because yeah. they have to entertain, and serve the people who is on the ship because they all on the ship. On a poor day, in a good ports, um, most people going out. So ship is very empty, and yeah, they will give you a lot of time off. So it's fine. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna change gears real quick. What is a ballpark figure? of what somebody can expect to make as an assistant waiter? Okay, um, I would tell, it's, first of all, it depends on where you work. If you work in a main dining room, mm -hmm. it will be the lowest you can get. If you're going to a select dining room, you mm -hmm. know, it's already like one like deck Like a specialty up. restaurant? No, the select is just... Um, Special area? It's not a special, it's the same like food, the same restaurant, but it's not the main dining room, just one deck up. Got it. Uh, it's a little bit more. Actually, it's even more money. Mm -hmm. If it's a speciality restaurant, it's like way more money, like way more money. So right. I, I work, first contract, I work in a main dining room. Second contract, I work in um, Toscan, Italian restaurant. Mm -hmm. The and, specialty. Yeah. yeah. And the third one, I work in uh, um, Lumine also. But it's like assigned to a suit restaurant. Oh, yeah. that Well, that one is like... I mean, that that was on a smaller ship, right? Lumine. Uh, Solstice. I mean, Solstice. Class. Oh, on Solstice. Mm -hmm. Oh, Solstice Cloud. Okay. Um, so that one was also a specialty restaurant. So you did. Yeah, main but dining like normal room. people can get there. So if for the Got specialty it. restaurant, you have to buy it's for, for two people. That was that time fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to buy it. Mm -hmm. For for mine, it was just like suits would go there, and mm -hmm. that's it. It's just like main dining room, but for the suits. Got it, got it, got it. So I would say for the main dining room, um, for two weeks, I would get around a thousand dollars. Okay. For two weeks, but yeah, you don't have to pay, you know, anything like this is a thing. But I want. So to you remind. would make about two grand a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For the, for for the, the, dining, the main room. dining room, yeah. For speciality like a Toscan and Le Lumine, it would be a, a thousand two hundred, thousand three hundred, like in a like New Year, maybe yeah. thousand four hundred. Sure. Is and this including tips? No, but tips is, it's just I wouldn't say I would rely on the tips a lot because they guess they would give tips in the end of the cruise, mm -hmm. which is like after seven months of serving the one person, <laughs> it will give you right. Oh wow! Okay. And it's I would say. After one like week cruise, the average is um, forty dollars, thirty dollars. Mm. Okay. So, so it's just yeah, because they all say sometimes like, oh, our tips is, were included to the cruise, and you're like, uh -huh. yeah, okay, okay, yeah, thank you. yeah. <laughs> right, like, never mind. <laughs> but it also actually depends on uh, where the ships goes because I know you can make a lot of money in Alaska and states sure like uh, Caribbeans a lot the states yeah it's a, a lot of money because it's very popular it's always packed mm -hmm. because like uh, Caribbeans it's very easy cruise you know it's mm -hmm. easy Alaska it's expensive cruises yeah mm, you know people go there not just to spend time on a ship they, they actually going to see things yeah so they have money so it's also good um, in Europe and Australia is like the smallest, like Australia, even the smaller one is like uh, the paychecks. Mm -hmm. Cause a lot of cancellations for some reason, I guess some people can get to the Australia or mm -hmm. something they cancel and yeah, the ship would be 10% um, empty. Wow. Yeah. Not what's that the, what's the lowest somebody can expect to make as an assistant waiter? Well, the lowest, okay, mm, the lowest is $800 a, a week. Oh, two weeks, two weeks, uh, sorry. Yeah. Got it. Right, so the lowest someone can expect to make is about 1600 a month-ish. Mm, yeah. Gotcha. And then what causes the, the, um, the pay to fluctuate? So maybe you get paid, you know... It's, we have, we had a, a revenue thing mm -hmm. where they sent... In the end of the cruise, they send the uh, quiz or whatever is that mm -hmm. to the guests and say how was your experience. And oh, I see. It depends how much, like how they rate you. you know, mm -hmm. If your rating is good, you you'll get the full 
money from them let's say like they won't pay more but they, you will get full money if mm -hmm. your rating is really low you won't get full money i guess it will just go to a company or something and how does that work so like do they send out the, the surveys and then they rate you specifically svetlana did this and... um no but somehow in a system it's assigned already i see yeah who was it I mean, they for the main know who yeah, so for serve. the main dining room, because you already assigned, mm -hmm. so they already know who was the waiter, who was the like stage room um, attendant, attendant, yeah. who was there, who was what. It's like so they know all the information. If it's a specialty restaurant, they mostly they grade it like as a restaurant experience, so entire restaurant would get the same. Mm -hmm. So they were more like a team. That's why. Because, right. Yeah. So, so they send out the surveys and then the surveys come back and then they kind of tally it up based on the tables that you, they, uh, they, they look at all the tables that you served and find out how did Svetlana do? Yes. And if you did well, then cool, you get your full pay. Yeah. Like... But if you, if you did just okay, then they'd hold some back. They they would not pay you I don't, yeah, I don't think it, money, this money goes to the, the passenger. I don't think so, but still just motivates you, I guess. Mm -hmm. They do this thing, so if you do good, you you know you get paid more. Oh, so it's a bonus then. There's it, what? It's 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 extra money they give you if you do well. Is that how that works? Kind of, yeah, I would say so. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. This so, is all how it works. Overall. Uh, actually, for the specialty, uh -huh. I remember it also depends on uh, how much. How how many people got like got there? How many people purchased this a specialty restaurant thing? Because if rest, your restaurant was full all the time, yeah, you mm. got a lot. No matter how they rate you, actually, really, no matter how. Well, they, <laughs> yeah, because they're spending money. Yeah, because they spend money. But if it was empty, uh -huh. no one wanted to go. Like it's also some people. Our, our waiter waiters would be assigned for mm -hmm. attracting people. Like, oh, do you want to go to this restaurant? Do you want right. to go to this restaurant? And they would choose the like the biggest pushers. I would say the mm -hmm. biggest. You know, did you ever have guys. to do that? No, I'm just like you know. I feel bad. I'm like, oh, yeah. you probably don't have money. You know. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, it's fine. Yeah, it's kind of too expensive. I agree. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, so if restaurant is empty, even though if you get uh, like highest grade, it's still you won't get a lot of money. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, that yeah. makes sense. You know, because like they're, they're going to give you a bonus if people are, you know, more people are coming through the door. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of weird that they would still give you the bonus even if you did a bad job. <laughs> yeah, it's just all about the specialty. I mean, it's kind sure. of, yeah. It, oh, well, they're expensive. Office. Like, it's like 50 to $80 or something like that yeah, for it's a, a three-course meal. For person, $50 per person, I remember. It was like, for us, they were doing uh, crew nights in right. specialty. I they remember. would give you like 50% like off. off yeah. But it's still, for two people, 50 bucks, right. it's like $25. Right. And you want, you always want to tip them, you know. Of course. So it's Yeah, because they serve you just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because I... I used to go to Tuscan a lot. Yeah. I used to go to Murano a lot. Murano, you like yeah. Murano? Yeah. yeah, I was a big fan of Murano with the the, the lobster. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I just don't eat seafood and the French uh, is all about this. So. Right, exactly. I so, like uh, cuisine. Have you been in cuisine? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Not, they have it not on every ship, right? In some of the ships, they have something different. Yeah, but I think on the smaller ships, they have something different. I totally forgot what it is. But because um, I was on Millennium on my last contract, mm. um, but anyway, yeah, they, they kind of switch it up a little bit, and then they had um, uh, 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 something on five. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, sushi on five. Sushi on well, sushi. yeah, sushi on five. But before that, it was something else where they had the yeah, like uh, some. I don't, like a bistro on five. Bistro on yes, five, bistro yes, on that's five. right. And they had the uh, the, 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 the French crew. onion soup. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But anyway, I digress. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did you try all of the restaurants? I think I did. I mean, obviously, I couldn't try, you know, the, the specialty ones. I never ate or anything at, in like Michael's Club or whatever. Okay. But yeah, I I tried the majority of the specialty restaurants, and I tried as much as possible. Like every two weeks, I would go to a specialty restaurant to treat myself. Because mm -hmm. you need to, you need to spend money on the ship. 
Of course. You have to live your life because you start realizing you have to live the life. It's not always about work. Because before I told you, I just want to, I, I was going to like, I'm not going to spend even a dollar. I will just. Yeah. But it's not possible. Just for your mental health, you mm-hmm. have to spend money there. Oh, for it's sure. Just, you have to control yourself, of course. But <laughs> My first contract, I was so stubborn about buying internet packages <laughs> I, I know i would also buy all this uh, 200 dollars. you know mm-hmm. it's kind of in general it's the cheapest one because yeah because if you pay just by minute it's, oh, it's a lot yeah it's a but lot, if yeah. you buy like a 200 and try to spread it for like let's say for a contract it's yeah. actually good but oh yeah absolutely when like, you when you spread it out like per month you really think about how much you're spending yeah but yeah you you do have to splurge a little bit that's true so yeah my first and second month i would just go on a helicopter uh rides swim with this um student gray swim mm-hmm. with the dolphins all this kind of stuff so mm-hmm. i i tried everything just because I was just like, wow, this is a real life, mm-hmm. and you know, I want to try this, and that's all different excursions and tours. Is this on your like your second contract after you learned? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, same. I, I just feel like when you on your first contract, you 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 see how much things cost, and you want to, and you really want to try to conserve and you know live a certain way. Mm-hmm. And then your next contract, you're like, screw that. <laughs> yeah, true. That's so true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, like, it, and especially in the first contract, because everything is new, it's already. That's right. That's why it's kind of still enough for you. The the ship, new life, it's still enough. But second contract, you're already coming like at home and just yeah. like, oh, I've seen this, I've seen the cabins, mm-hmm. like crew bars, I've seen it all. And give me something else, and that's yeah. why you start doing this. Well, especially thing. if you come on the ship and then you start seeing new friends, and now you want to start having real experiences yeah. with these friends. You start going on excursions, and you start. I don't know, doing other things on the ship, you know, I don't know. But it, it, it becomes, you, you start to want different experiences mm-hmm. the more contracts that you do. Um, I, w- I had a question and then it literally just <laughs> left my brain. <laughs> so um, what, what are some of the challenges that you had in general? I would say my biggest challenge was in general, it's when I was working on a reflection Mm -hmm. because it's a brand new ship. It was the newest ship and they had lots of expectations and the rating needs to be like the highest ones. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of pressure, a lot. And after that, I realized I don't want to work on a brand new ship because it's a lot of pressure. They want you to be perfect, but you, I just got there, you know. I can't be perfect. And even it's whenever you work in a service, it just sometimes it's unfair, you know. You yeah. can do your best, but they still will give you one out they of want ten. More, more, more. And no matter yeah. what, and you will get like a problems. You will yeah. get a, for every single one one's guest put. You get the problems always. There is no any ones that they will like. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. You. They will call you. They will talk to you. They will give you different papers like opportunity lock. If you like, if you have too many of them, you get a warning. Three mm-hmm. warnings and you out. You know. Mm-hmm. So you just stressed because the management is pressing you and it's just like do better, do better, do better. And I. I also. I didn't know. Um, about the how the system works, so I would just argue with everyone, and like no matter how many stripes a person, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would just like I'm right, whatever. Also, I just like I came from a school, you know, I was young and I didn't mm-hmm. really know a lot of like life things. Yeah. So I was just like, you're wrong, I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> and um, also, as a Russian, we have a problem. We have an attitude. It just. It's just like the way how we are. Mm-hmm. We can like the cast can ask stupid question and we'll be like, it doesn't mean anything, you know. Americans, let's say, they mm-hmm. they learn how to say like, ah, yeah. smile and be nice, but we didn't. We 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 not used to do that. Right. Well, Russian. I feel like the Russians and Eastern Europeans that I've met, they tend to be very straightforward and very exactly. blunt. So if you're stupid, they're gonna say you're stupid. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so that's why. I would just have so many problems because they would say you like guests say you have an attitude like and not only guests the crew members would mm-hmm. like because this is a teamwork right you mm-hmm. assistant waiters has a uh, mm-hmm. waiter and sometimes 
like in the team work some problems else is going on and i would just like seriously and i'm not gonna do this mm -hmm. and they're like oh you can you like you have to do these things like this yeah. is your job and you have to and like i wish i would be in reflection we would have better leaders better management who mm -hmm. could be nicely explain you like why you have to do that not mm -hmm. just like scream and they give you a different papers to sign and yeah. it's just so it was unrespectful like i understand i was a big time um i was just not accepting that i could be wrong or something sure but you like you this just giving me a papers to sign you're not gonna get anything you know you have yeah. to like somehow explain yeah. so the, like a little job it's not the easy one you have to have some knowledge how to communicate with people how to make right. them understand and hear what you want to say did you have a lot of managers like that yeah and some some just because we had like every single ship had like paisana business i remember this thing yeah. the so mafia. <laughs> <laughs> right so people would get got that promoted just because they're from the same country mm -hmm. or like friends mostly just because of the same country like yeah. this is a really and so they don't really have enough knowledges still like good people very talented people they would get like they would see them mm -hmm. and they would also have a lot of uh promotion and stuff but mostly like pasana business work did you ever see somebody who deserved the promotion but the pasana business they, they won i i can remember honestly it's still too far, like it's too it's far still, back it's uh, now it's just i still think if you're great at your job you you will be good if yeah. you're great at your job but it's in service is really hard you have to pretty much have a talent <laughs> i would mm -hmm. say just everybody likes you mm -hmm. and things bad things are happening like like the food something wrong with was the food mm -hmm. you know and it's not your fault but you mm -hmm. still have to get from this situation and be nice and of course. like it's it just takes to learn a lot so i st but i would still say if you're great at your job yeah i don't think you will have a problems if you just okay if you average yeah you might have a lot of problems yeah just because someone likes you someone don't so yeah right how did you deal with the loneliness on the ship socializing with people and uh because it's easy to feel isolated on the ship mm. you know like even though you're surrounded by people sometimes you just feel alone yeah that's how, how that did you was deal a, with that the, that was a problem when i was living in the single cabin because mm -hmm. in the end of the day you just by yourself and you, you so knew you like you want to talk to someone but you're in a single cabin everybody would say oh you're so lucky but i'm like i'm lonely yeah um i guess just internet calling to like going out and calling to your family and talking to them trying to make new friends visiting different like, crew events mm -hmm. if if i would be just like feel lonely and it's not the night time i would just go to crew mess you always always because everybody have a different schedules and mm -hmm. someone always have a uh, break so mm -hmm. they would go to eat and you always can meet someone in a crew mess that's right and yeah this is the way just communicating with the people this is the only way yeah what you can do i don't i don't know there, there is a gym there was a gym so you can like, you can yeah we mm -hmm. can go to the gym or what else you can visit that's it. You can't really walk on a ship in the no. guest area. Yeah, so no. <laughs> you can't talk to guests, like, especially. I mean, unless you're on a duty and you're sure. working. Yeah, you can't just walk around and chat. Hey, John. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, on the flip side, what did you like most about working on cruise ships? Um, well, first of all, definitely are travelings, because now whenever people, like, Oh, where you been? And you just start. Oh, okay, let's start. Australia, this mm -hmm. and that, and they are so impressed. And you remember all these things. You have mm -hmm. so many pictures and experiences and all these magnets. So you've been in many, many places. This is awesome. The most awesome thing. And the second thing, I think it was like a good life school. I would say because I learned. I realized that people from different country have different mentalities. Mm -hmm and like seriously it's it's a serious thing like before they told me that but you just like it's fine we all people we all the same no like one you know like people like let's say from 
Philippines, they can uh, they act in this way. People mm -hmm. from Serbia, they act completely this way. So, mm -hmm. and you have to know. So, you will expect you, you won't take it personally. You know how to communicate with mm -hmm. them. This is like so. How to communicate with people with different mentality? Yeah. I like that one. How to organize your life? How to organize your time? Mm -hmm. Because whenever you have like one hour break, you have to do so many things. And yeah. this is what I learned, you know, how to organize it, mm -hmm. not just to waste the time. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that's it. Oh, well, I made money. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this was a good thing. Yeah. You know, it, having the money and being able to travel, making the friends for me, one of the best things, if not the best thing, is like all the amazing people that I've met. Exactly, yeah. Because I still talking to some of them. I told you uh, celebrity crushes coming to San Diego in the end of the March. I want so badly to mm -hmm. go there. I hope it's I think it's so nice. Which, which ship is coming? Equ it? Equinox or Eclipse. I okay. they sound the same so mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I don't know but I'll actually I think I, I want to post on the Facebook like hey who is on this ship you know. When you find out let me know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would love to see who's there and if I know of anybody. Because they whatever. also go to LA and so yeah. So That's right. The, but San Diego, they told me it will be a first port, mm -hmm. first first US port. So it's another, it. you know, problem all this uh, immigration thing. Right. Yes. Yeah. So you just never know. But And then they go to um, LA. Mm -hmm. And so it's a good first port and plus embarkation day. It's going to be hard. But yeah. all I want, I just want to get in, you know. <laughs> and my friends, they would text me like, oh, can like can we come out? You show mm -hmm. us the things. I'm like, sure. But I want to just to get inside of yeah. the ship. Get me and, on the ship first. <laughs> yes, exactly. And just go around to see my old cabins, to mm -hmm. see who works there. It's, I think it's so awesome like, to meet someone who used to work with. Just And you just like lost any contacts and you just like wow you're here <laughs> that i'm so yeah i want to see them yeah it's such a it's such a weird chance that you know like you're here and then oh the ship's coming by you know like they're just going to stop by for a little while like it's just a nice feeling yeah and now i still have um many people let's say in my instagram or something uh i still following like we're not talking anymore i met maybe them once in in mm -hmm. a crew mess or something yeah but so they would always post pictures from all of, around the world and mm -hmm. yeah, this keep me updated what's yeah. going on. You'll see what ship they're on, where they're going, what's happening. Yeah, so it's like a management and like sometimes like, oh, sorry, yeah. you know, I feel bad, <laughs> but sometimes like, oh, like he you or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. But um, that pretty much wraps it up okay. as 